Okay, welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about one of the more important nutrients in our food, fats. In this video, we're going to discuss a whole range of questions about fats, starting with which foods contain fats and why do we need them. We're also going to distinguish between different types of fats by asking the question, are all fats alike? Or are there some that are more helpful than others? We're also going to talk about why we as humans don't live on a diet of cakes. Now, my recommendation with these questions one more time is that you pause the video once I've asked a question, think about the answer and then proceed. Okay, so let's move on to our first question which is, which foods contain fats? Well, uh, nuts like almonds, pecans, walnuts and hazelnuts are all fat rich foods. And so are plants like avocados. Plant based oils like olive oil and mustard oil are rich in fats and milk and meat products are also fat rich foods. Now the good news is that you don't have to remember this list. You can just take a printout of uh, the presentation slide that I've provided with this video and you can just stick it to the refrigerator for handy use. You know fats generally come with a bad reputation which begs the question do we really need fats? Well it turns out the answer is a resounding yes. Yes we need fats because fats are a great source of energy and they're also a great depot for storing it. As a matter of fact, per unit, fats provide more energy than any other nutrient. It's about 9 calories per gram. Now I want to show you a quick video which is going to highlight how fats are a great source of energy and are also a great depot for storing it. So let's watch this video. So what we're seeing here is what happens inside our body when we eat fat rich foods. We'll watch as the food goes through a series of scripted events. At first uh, the food is broken up through chewing and then it ends up in our stomach. And then through a series of chemical processes it gets broken down into different components. These yellow droplets that you're seeing here are in fact fats which we're going to track really closely. The fat drifts from the stomach now into the intestine. This is where nutrient absorption occurs and the fats get repackaged and then they travel through the bloodstream. You will watch it here in the video. They are traveling through the bloodstream uh, to different tissues uh, like the muscles and the muscles as you can see here will use the repackaged fat to burn energy. The excess fat, the fat which is not burnt, is stored underneath our skin. Okay, so now that we have clearly demonstrated that fats are a great source of energy and they are also a great warehouse for storing energy for future use, let's move on to the second reason why we need fats, which is that we need fats to cushion our organs and to insulate our body. Now have a look at this picture on your screen here. Uh, fats here are represented with the light yellow color and you'll notice that they're present around our critical organs thereby cushioning them from impact. Fats are also present you'll notice in between the skin and the muscles thereby insulating our body much like a, a blanket. The third reason why we need fats is to make foods tasty. We all knew that. If I were to ask you to name uh, three of your most favorite foods, odds are that they're probably fat rich foods. The really interesting scientific question to ask here however is why is it that fatty foods are generally so tasty? You know this is a rather tricky answer because more scientific research needs to be conducted on this particular issue but the best answer that I could give you is the following. When you think about it there is an advantage to being able to taste and enjoy fat. For most of our history as humans Overeating hasn't been much of a problem, has it? But starvation has. So a predisposition to eating fats, which let's remember are high calorie foods, could really mean the difference between starvation and survival. Now I would put an asterisk right next to this answer and say that you should conduct your own research to find out more about this particular question and contribute to the conversation by adding comments to this video. Okay, so now that we know that fats are really useful for us, why is it that we don't ditch all other food products and just live on a diet of cakes? Well, there are two major reasons why we don't do this. First is the fats are actually really high in calories. We learned that they provide about 9 calories per gram. 
Now we're also going to learn in subsequent videos that other energy giving nutrients like carbohydrates and proteins provide only about 4 calories per gram which is what less than half of what fats provide per gram. So eating too many calories which can be done by consuming fat rich foods that we don't use to burn energy can uh, cause us to gain weight and we saw this in the video that the fats that are not used by our body to uh, produce energy uh, are stored inside our body. The second reason is that we as humans need a variety of nutrients and not just fats and this constitutes a healthy and balanced diet. We're going to do a full video about this. Um, and while consuming fats, it is important to note that we only need a certain amount and a certain type of fat. Not all fats are equal. Therefore, it's important to ask the question, what are the different types of fats? Well, there are three different types of fats. Unsaturated fats, saturated fats and trans fats. Now, the reason why it's important for us to learn a little bit about each one of these different types of fats is because in just a little bit we're going to classify them as good fats, bad fats and really really bad fats. So what we can then do armed with that information is that we can increase the intake of the good fats in our diet and decrease or eliminate the intake of the bad or the really really bad fats in our diet. So let's learn a little bit about unsaturated fats. These are generally found in plant-based products. Uh, like nuts and avocados, plant-based oils like olive oil and mustard oil, and salmon, which is a type of a fish, is also rich in unsaturated fats. Saturated fats, however, are found in milk and meat products, and in certain types of oils like uh, coconut oil and palm oil. By the way, what does it mean uh, for something to be saturated? Well, the word saturated means soaked, or unable to hold or contain more. So if I were to use the word saturated in a sentence, I would say during the race, the city's streets were completely saturated with cyclists. So then that begs the question, what are saturated fats saturated with? Or what are saturated fats completely soaked with? In order to answer this question, what we're going to do is play a game. I'm going to show you two different pictures and I want you to spot as many differences in between those two pictures as you possibly can. Ready? Here we go. Pause the video and spot as many differences as you can between these two pictures. So before we compare our answers, I would now like to share with you uh, the fact that the image at the top is the chemical formula for saturated fats and the image at the bottom is the chemical formula for unsaturated fats. Now a chemical formula if you don't know is a chemist's way of representing the elements or the atoms inside a chemical compound. But don't worry too much about that. What we are focused on here is just the differences between these two images. Okay so let's run through the differences. If you count the number of H's H's by the way stand for hydrogen. If you count the number of H's in the image at the top or saturated fats, there are more H's at the top than there are at the bottom. Which may mean that saturated fats are saturated by H's or hydrogen. But we'll confirm that in just a second. The second difference that I spot is that there are more spaces in the image at the bottom or unsaturated fats than there are at the top. So if you look at the saturated fats image really closely, you'll see that this image is rather tightly packed and there are no gaps or spaces in between this particular image. However, if you look at the unsaturated fats, there are some gaps and spaces and I'll try and highlight them with the help of my mouse pointer. So there's gap here and then there is a space here. So what does that teach us? Well, it teaches us that saturated fats are actually completely saturated with H's or hydrogen atoms. By the way, that was the original question that we were trying to answer. And it also teaches us that saturated fats are extremely tightly packed structures with no gaps or spaces. However, unsaturated fats, the image at the bottom, does have certain white spaces and uh, gaps in between it. Thinking about it from a phase of matter standpoint, solids, liquids and gases, which state of matter is the most tightly packed? Solids, right? So that would mean that saturated fats that are really tightly packed are probably easy to freeze and are thus solid at room temperature. And unsaturated fats, the image at the bottom, which has got certain spaces or gaps in between its chemical formula, 
uh, is probably not a solid at room temperature. So let's have a look at these two images and now tell me what is the difference between these two images that you see, coconut oil and plant-based oils like olive oil. The correct answer is that coconut oil, a saturated fat, is solid at room temperature and plant-based oils, unsaturated fats, are liquid at room temperature. That's the big difference between these two. Coconut oils, which are saturated fats, are solid at room temperature because there are no gaps or spaces in their chemical formula. However, in plant-based oils like olive oils, these are unsaturated fats and liquid at room temperature primarily because there are gaps or spaces in their chemical formula. So, this is actually a very big distinguishing factor between saturated and unsaturated fats. Saturated fats are generally solid at room temperature and unsaturated fats are generally liquid at room temperature. Okay, let's learn a little bit about trans fats now. Trans fats can be found in many of the snack foods that we eat. Uh, you can uh, find out how much trans fat is there in a particular food by going through the nutritional label on the foods package. We're going to learn about how to read a package label in a separate video. Vanaspati ghee, which is a type of oil used prolifically in Asia, contains a lot of trans fat. Uh, and many of the products like french fries and burgers that are cooked by fast food restaurants using hydrogenated oils have trans fats in them. Now, the question is, what is hydrogenated oil? Well, it is perfectly good liquid vegetable oil, which is heated in the presence of hydrogen. So, my next question to you would be, why would fast food chains take really good vegetable oil and then hydrogenate it? Well, think about it. When you heat a particular oil, like a vegetable oil, in the presence of hydrogen, what you're doing is you're taking the empty spaces or gaps away from its chemical structure, saturating it with hydrogen and therefore converting it into a solid. And a solid is really easy to transport, something the fast food companies love. What they also love is that hydrogenated oils can withstand reheating, which means that they don't have to change the oil over and over again. In the next part of this video, we're going to classify the three different types of fats as good, bad, and very bad fats. See you then.